In this video, I'm gonna share some of the top ways that people are actually using blockchain technology. All right, because I get this question a lot. People say, hey, what can you use the blockchain for? Like, what are people actually doing with it right now? So I'm gonna tell you in this video, I'm gonna show you some projects, like where users are, big companies that are investing in the space, like companies you've heard of, and how they're developing blockchain technology. All right, so before we get into that, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory from DAP University. On this channel, I teach you how to become a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then click the like button down below and click subscribe. And if you want to take that next step to master blockchain, uh, you should join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's talk about these top ways that people are actually using blockchain. And I'm also probably going to share some ways that I think we're gonna see this space continue to grow in some ways that I think we'll see some adoption uh, in the mid to long term, all right? So the number one area where we're definitely seeing adoption of blockchain technology is banking and finance, all right? I've got these kind of bullet points pull up here on my screen. Uh, and this is a no-brainer, really, in my opinion, because one of the first major use cases of blockchain technology at all was cryptocurrency, right? Because it provided a benefit you couldn't get somewhere else, right? You could make uh, transactions like off the radar, and also you could uh, speculate on cryptocurrency and get returns that you couldn't get somewhere else in, in many cases, right? That's one of the reasons we saw this big adoption uh, early on, right? And a lot of the use cases that we're seeing now uh, have continued on from this. And, you know, banking and finance is no surprise. We've seen big organizations uh, like JP Morgan launch their own digital currency. And we're also seeing, uh, you know, entire nations like China, for example, launching their own digital currency. And I see banking and finance as being a long term play for blockchain, all right? Because it makes a lot of sense to put money on a distributed ledger like this. So there's so many, you know, financial use cases that are, you know, just continuing off in this direction and serving the needs of the early users in the cryptocurrency space. These are your uh, cryptocurrency traders, essentially. And that's kind of what DeFi is, all right? So I've done some other videos about this on my channel, so check those out if you haven't already. But DeFi basically is taking existing excuse me, existing financial products and porting them over to the blockchain. Things like savings, loans, derivatives, etc. So you can head over to a website like DeFiPulse.com and see, you know, apps that are doing this. This is blockchain technology you know, being played out. And it's doing what I told you a minute ago. Uh, it's giving you benefits you can't get somewhere else, like high interest savings, loans where you don't, you know, need a credit score and you can, you know, borrow anonymously and things like that. And there's plenty of examples where you can see um, these projects in the wild, right? Right? Like MakerDAO is a good example of a DeFi project. Essentially, Maker uh, has a stable coin, DAI, which gives us a cryptocurrency whose price doesn't change, which is key for anyone who wants to transact digitally and doesn't want to worry about their, you know, their currency losing value. All right. And also there are projects like Compound Finance, which allow you to earn high savings rate on your stable currency. But you can basically go park it in a protocol like this and earn a higher interest rate on your savings than you would in a bank account, for example. So not financial advice, I'm not telling you to go do this, but these are kinds of opportunities and benefits that are getting created with blockchain technology that you can't get somewhere else, all right? So uh, finance and banking are probably the number one use case, and I see them as probably continuing to be the number one use case for the foreseeable future. That's one of the main reasons I focus so much on those types of use cases on this channel, uh, on Ethereum, because I see it as being a really important technology for that space, okay? So let's look at another big use case where people are actually using it. And I wanna talk about supply chain, all right? So what is supply chain? So basically supply chain is just tracking the life cycle of a good as it moves from, you know, the person who made it to the person who's buying it, all right? So basically, let's say you're buying uh, produce, for example, if you want to know anything about the produce, you need to understand where it came from. And, and that's what supply chain is all about. So if you go buy it at a grocery store, you understanding the supply chain would tell you how uh, it was made, where it was grown, uh, who shipped it, like where did it go in transit before it got to the grocery store and ultimately in your grocery bag, okay? So there's lots of other things that, you know, rely upon supply chain, pretty much anything you can buy, any manufactured assembled good, like, a, you know, a desk, a camera, any of the stuff that's in this office here that I'm recording this video on, um, has a supply chain that can be accounted for. So what benefit does uh, blockchain technology give to supply chain? Well, 
It's transparency, all right? So anytime you have a ledger that's shared by a bunch of businesses that don't necessarily trust one another, it gives this transparency element. Let's go back to that example of produce. So let's say, you know, you're buying a tomato at a store. Um, if you want to know how it moved from, you know, the person who grew the tomato all the way to your shopping cart, you could track every point in between with this distributed ledger technology where someone has to record what happened on what date. Um, whenever this thing, you know, moved through the supply chain. The same thing for like a desk. So say you bought this desk and you went over where every single part came from, well, you can track that with blockchain technology because it's this distributed ledger uh, that no one owns that we can have some visibility and accountability in the supply chain uh, to give you that benefit. So here's an example of uh, someone who's actually working on a blockchain solution for supply chain, and that would be Walmart. So you can see here, Walmart Canada has launched a blockchain-based freight and payment network, the world's largest full production blockchain for solution for any industrial application in partnership with DLT Labs. So Walmart's pioneering this effort to use distributed ledger technology uh, to innovate in the supply chain space, all right? So this is a really good example of someone who's going in, trying to solve these problems and bring this benefit uh, that this technology provides into this industry and become a disruptor. So the next big way that people are actually using blockchain technology right now is real estate. All right. So this is really important, right? Because I can see the real estate business basically trending towards a completely online process, or at least the option of being a completely online process, right? So how people are using it right now, you know, we're still kind of in the experimental phase, but there's so many ways in which you know, real estate can be just moved to the blockchain. So let me just talk about all the areas um, where you can get this benefit, right? So with real estate, um, there's, a, there's a few things. There's the title to the house, all right? Knowing who owns it and just transferring that title. There's the loan for the property. And then there's a process of just like finding it and, you know, buying it and making all those things like work together. So I'll break that down and tell you how you can uh, get benefits um, by using the blockchain, okay? So first, let's start off with the title of the house, all right? So a lot of times right now, the title to a home is literally just a piece of paper that sits in a courthouse somewhere. At least that's how it works here in the United States. And yeah, this piece of paper gets digitized and stored in a database somewhere. But anytime you like purchase a home, someone has to sign these documents manually. A bunch of people have to like, you know, look at this. It has to go to a courthouse, get stamped. You have to go to a closing. It's crazy how many moving parts there are just to move uh, ownership from one person to another. There's all these fees involved. So a lot of this friction could be completely digitized and removed by putting this information on a blockchain, okay? So that's one big way is just digitizing the actual deed to the house itself and then programmatically transferring that whenever a purchase happens. Another way is uh, loans. So most people, when they buy houses, they don't buy them in cash. I mean, some people do, but a vast majority of people take out a loan in order to purchase a property. I talked about how we're already seeing uh, the ability to create loans with DeFi protocols. Well, if we can continue that out and you know build that out as a viable use case for real estate loans as well, bigger loans, we could definitely uh, streamline the process of lending to purchase a house that way as well. And then the final thing is really just the payment and, and just gluing this whole thing together, all right? So, uh, I mean, that kind of goes in with the financing as well, but this is really where the magic of the blockchain could happen. You could basically like just pay for the house. It transfers the title as a digital record and you can get the loan basically all in one shot. Um, and that's a huge magic. Imagine if you could just find a property online, click a button, and then now you own it. I mean, it's possible with blockchain technology, okay? And here's a reason why I see this actually playing out eventually. I mean, maybe not as simple as just like click one button and make it happen. Like we may want some safety uh, procedures in there to prevent, you know, bad things from happening. But let me show you how easy it could be, all right? So right now, real estate's already trending towards becoming a completely online process. You know, the first major players in there were, uh, you know, Zillow. You can find your house on Zillow, like go to the showing, have an IoT device, like unlock the door for you, take your tour with no one else breathing down your neck, uh, and then like buy the house on your phone while you're inside of it and transfer the title to you, get a loan. It, it could be crazy. Like it could definitely get to that point. And that's the kind of result that I could 
could see uh, happening with blockchain technology. Now, there's a few things we had to accomplish in order to get there, but that gives you an idea of what's possible in this space. All right, so the next big use case is digital identity. All right, and this is one uh, that's already getting some adoption, but it has a lot of room to grow, right, as we saw some problems surrounding this, okay? So digital identity is big um, because if there's a way for you to prove who you are on the web without having to give away all your information over to a middle company, um, that's a huge benefit of blockchain, okay? So people are already starting to have identity solutions where you can, you know, authenticate on websites uh, with blockchain rather than having to give away all your information to the platform itself. Um, but here's where we can achieve a lot more benefits, right? So if we could develop some sort of digital identity that has a reputation uh, element to it on the blockchain, we could start doing things like credit scores. We could do uh, under collateralized loans or completely unsecured loans. Uh, if you had that kind of credit score. And you could also, you know, have these digital identities that authorize you to do other things that weren't just for software platforms. So you could do like um, anything where you need a permission in real life. So let's say you need permission to enter a country, for example. Well, that's a passport that could be digitized to your identity. You need permission to operate a vehicle. Well, that's a driver's license. That's also part of your digital identity that could be put on a blockchain. If you need admission to a concert, an event of any kind, that's a ticket, which can be attached to your digital identity to prove that you are you, okay? And all this stuff can be put uh, on the blockchain as we solve some of these problems in the space actually uh, achieves more adoption over time, all right? So way number five is uh, the government and the public sector. So uh, earlier in the video, I talked about how China is releasing their own digital currency. So that's an example of how government's using blockchain technology. But there's so many ways that governments can leverage blockchain technology. So go back to the real estate example that I was talking about a minute ago. If you can find a way to digitize the deed to a house to talk about like, you know, who owns what? Well, that's a digital record, a public document that a government could, you know, digitize and not worry about keeping all this paperwork uh, in a courthouse somewhere and doing away with all these inefficient processes, all right? So that's just one example of a public record. Think about any deed to your car, your birth certificate, or any kind of documentation that a government needs to hold to prove that you are you, that you own something. And all that could also be attached to that digital identity, uh, which I mentioned a minute ago. The next thing uh, inside the government sector is also legal contracts, all right? So one big part of blockchain technology is the use of smart contracts. And one thing I'm really excited to explore are ways to actually, you know, make legally binding contracts with code. And that's something that a lot of people are experimenting with uh, with blockchain technology is how to make these actual covenants and agreements, making them digital and putting them on the blockchain. All right, so those are my top examples of how people are actually using blockchain and some other ways in which I think we can see this space grow and continue to gain adoption. All right, so I hope you like this video. Again, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click the like button down below. And if you want to take that next step and master blockchain, then you should join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.